Hey guys, it's Malcolm Moore here, and thank you for joining me for some virtual snowboarding today. So let me know where you're watching this, where in the world you are, if you're sat on your sofa, maybe you're sat on the loo. But this is one of my favourite runs in outdoors, and I'm going to call it the Cheeky Marmot, because it starts from Marmot 2, and it's a cheeky run, it's a long run that takes you all the way down to Uez, one of the lowest points of the resort. So we start right up at 2,800 meters. And it's not actually one run, it's loads of different runs I'm going down, but we're starting off reasonably steep. This is a black run at the top here. It's quite short, you can see the bottom of it just there. And it's early in the morning, and this part of the mountain is kind of hidden in the shade, it doesn't get much sun. And as you can see below, the snow is quite firm, it's quite icy. Couple more turns and as you can see, I'm just about to let the board fly. Really pick up some speed here because looking ahead, you can see there's actually a big bit that I need to get up and over. So I know a few of you sort of struggle riding on the flats, particularly at high speeds. It's very easy to catch an edge on the flat, but basically I'm just rocking from one edge, toe to heel at the minute, just to keep a bit more control. Slow right down here, put in a bit of a safety check. Often people are sat on the other side of that roller, don't want to go crashing into them. If you've got a spotter there, it is really good fun to take a bit of speed and really jump over that part, but I'm just on my own, so safety first. The run's mellowed out a little bit now. I'm onto a red run. As you can see, I've opened my turns up a little bit more, but I'm still not fully trusting the snow underneath me, so I'm not fully carving. I'm still allowing a little bit of skid. Sometimes when it's a bit icy, if you try and trust your edges too much, the board just kind of skids out underneath you and you lose control. But if you just relax your ankles a little bit, so it's almost carved turns, but just giving the board a little bit of skid, it's a bit easier, a little bit safer to control. So again, just rocking one edge to the other now through this thin bit. And I'm about to come across one piece here. So you can see, just have a quick look, check that no one's coming across, make sure I've got a clear path, and then just cut straight across. Now I'm coming onto a blue run. This blue run here on the piece map is called Couloir. It's one of my favorite runs in resort. It's a really wide open blue. It makes really fun side hits when you get into spring and the snow slushes up. And these big walls on my left and my right, if it's not such an icy day, when they soften up, they can be really fun. Little jumps and things like that naturally form in the side there. But as it's a blue, again, I've opened my run turns up, sorry, even more. So I'm pretty much carving now, big open turns, and just really using my turn shape to control my speed. So that's adjustments I make, and you know, that's what sort of good snowboarding is really, not just controlling yourself by hitting the brakes and putting a skid in, but just constantly changing your turn shapes, adjusting it to the terrain in front of you. So I'm doing quite big turns here, but there's not really much skid. So if we have a look at this skier in front, he's going quick, but you can see all the spray coming off his skis there. All his control is just coming right at the end of the turn by just pushing his skis out into a skid. So obviously I'm on a snowboard, but it's the same theory, you know, the same theory applies here and I'm trying to just manage the pressure throughout my board evenly throughout the turn and control my speed by the turn shape, as I say, rather than just kicking that back leg out and doing a skip. Now I say that though, there are times where like just there and just here, you do need to turn the board into a skid. If you don't have the space to make a turn, you know, there's loads of skiers there, that bit of the run was a little bit hectic. So I just hit the brakes by, yeah, twisting the board, putting it into a heel edge side slip, essentially into a skid to slow myself down. And I wanted to keep a bit of speed. Again, you can see it's a bit flat here. I'm just coming across. This is one of the main hubs in outdoors. Actually, there's quite a few lifts that come out here. I'm just getting to the top of one of the main sort of green slopes in resorts. In resorts, sorry. So when I'm teaching people, once we've kind of done the magic carpet, you know, they've got their basic side slipping, heel and toe edge down, and we're ready to start doing turns, we'll come onto one of these green pieces over here. It's really good because it's super wide. You'll see in a minute as I just cross over the brow of the hill here, it's basically this massive green piece that stretches all the way across. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the far right hand side. It tends to be a little bit quieter over here. And as I mentioned, you can see there's a few ski schools going on. There's a guy on the right there just teaching some people. And I'm going to cut even more across to the right because it's super quiet here. And it is actually reasonably steep for a green run, this one. There are some slightly mellower ones. It's quite nice as well when you're learning to snowboard. It's actually good to have a little bit of gradient sometimes. If the slope is really flat and you're trying to balance all your weight on one edge, it's really easy for the front of your board. So if you're on your heel edge, it's really easy for the toes just to dip down slightly too much and catch into the snow. And vice versa, if you're on your toe edge, it's really easy for your heels 
to catch in the snow behind you. But if you've got something a teeny bit steeper, just as you balance off on your edge, because the slope's a little bit steeper, the front of your board will just be lifted up a little bit more and it's gonna make catching that edge slightly more difficult. But anyway, a really varied run. That's probably the steepest part of the green I just did. And you can see it's really mellowing out again here. So I'm just adjusting my turns, you know, make sure I give everyone plenty of space. You know, although I'm in control, everyone's learning and it's not good to sort of scare people by going, going too close to them. So I just rock in edge to edge, let my board pick up a bit of speed because I know I've got a bit of a flat section coming. So basically, if you were to look on a piece map, I'm now coming to what's called the DMC. So this is one of the main lifts in Outdoors. It's got three stations. The lowest part is right at the top of Outdoors town, and it can take you all the way up to the highest point of Outdoors, Peak Blanc, 3,300 meters. And that's what I'm approaching now. You can see it's got real flat underneath me. I'm starting to run out of speed. I'm gonna bend over in a minute and just put my back foot out just so I can skate through this area. And what I'm gonna do with the footage, because this bit's a little bit slow, I'm just gonna speed it up to three times speed. So I haven't suddenly taken a bunch of steroids or some drugs and gone super fast. That's just the camera sped up to three times. So this is me skating now. So you can see the board underneath me. Had some cool shots of it there. I'm on the Ride War Pig, which is a really fun board. I pretty much ride it for all conditions. Um, it's one of these volume shifted boards. You ride it slightly shorter than normal one. So I'm quite big. I'm about six foot one, weigh about 90 kilograms. I would normally ride like a 160, something like that. But on the Ride War Pig, I downsized to a 154. The idea being that it has the same surface area as a larger board, but it's crammed into a shorter length by adding waist width. This means it's really fun, it's super maneuverable in tight spots, so if you ride lots of trees, things like that, or if you just want to be able to do really tight turns, it's got a nice short length, so it nips around really quickly, but the added waist width means it's really fun to carve, because you can see there, look at my feet, I have absolutely no toe or heel drag over the edges. I've got size UK 11 feet, so, you know, often on a normal board, my toes and my heels will hang over a bit, and then it's really easy for me to boot out, which is basically where, yeah, your toes or your heels dig into the snow when you put the board at a high edge angle. So I just nipped up that section to get strapped in. It's still quite flat here, but there's enough speed to take me along this section of the run. It's really awesome here, so yeah, just have a look out. That's the view right across the valley. Outdoors is really cool. I'm sure you know, you never probably found yourself claustrophobic in a ski resort, but quite a few ski resorts, you are kind of hemmed more into the bottom of a valley. The bottom part of Outdoors is really cool because you're on a plateau and you can really see miles around out to all the, you know, all the other mountains all around you. It's not just the peaks that are immediately right next to you. Anyway, so I've just skated over that flat section. If you're happy skating, it's really not too bad. And this is gonna take us down to the blue run which goes down to Uez. And basically, I love this run because nobody does it. Because of that little skate you have to do, just no one seems to be bothered to come down here. And it's actually a really nice, really fun run. And you can see the snow already is actually starting to change. At the top of the run, we're up at 2,800 meters. We've now dropped down to 1,800 meters here. And this run as well, particularly after I come around this corner, is fully south facing. So it's been really feeling the heat of that sun and it's starting to soften up. And where I had really cold, wintry conditions at the beginning of the run, I'm actually getting some really nice, soft spring conditions now. So if you were to do this run at the end of the day, you know, in April, it would be just way too slushy. It's had the sun all day, it's low down, it would have really kind of heated up. But I think this is uh, kind of mid-February I'm doing this, and even, you know, that sun in February, low down here, it's starting to soften it up, give me some nice conditions. And you can see I'm charging a bit more here. There's no one around me, so I'm really just doing these big, open, carved turns. And you can see as well, I'm actually going down below the resort. So Alp Duez is a ski resort, and Uez is a town a few hundred meters below it. Ooh, watch out for that dog, make sure he stays there. And you can see just in front of me, that's, this is the road. Uh, the road up to Alp Duez, if you're a cyclist, if you know anything about cycling, you definitely have heard of the 21 bends up to Alp Duez. It was, it's probably the most famous um, cycle stage of the Tour de France. There's these 21 perpen bends which bring you up over a vertical kilometre from the bottom of the mountain all the way to Alpes And the Tour de France, it doesn't come through here every year, but it's definitely one of the favourite stages of the Tour de France. It's this really competitive, super steep climb all the way to the top. Anyway, that's me at the bottom, down to Uez. I peak up 
and I can see the lift has just got into the station. So that's why I'm just gonna run ahead of these guys, and make sure I get into one of these bubbles because it is a reasonably slow lift from here. The bubbles come around sort of once every five, 10 minutes or so. So if you see them there, you wanna try and get in them as soon as possible. But yeah, so that's the run. I call it the Cheeky Marmot. Super fun run, really varied. You go from black to red to blue to green, back to a blue run. And as I say, I've got all conditions there. Wintry, steep conditions and nice, mellow, slushy conditions as well. If you're getting this lift, take your board inside. I do Ooh. not trust the racks outside. There have been a couple of occasions where boards have fallen out. But yeah, that's me done. A little bit out of breath. There I am. That was good fun. <sighs> All right, cheers guys, thanks for watching. As always, please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, and there'll be more like this coming all throughout the year, all throughout next winter. All right, see ya.